What is a square anyway? Actually, there are a lot of things to say about the square. It seems like such a simple shape, and most students, when they study geometry, like dealing with squares because they find them easy. A square is a four-sided figure, a quadrilateral. It is a two-dimensional figure. It does not have volume. Let's look at the definition of a square. A square is a quadrilateral that has four congruent sides and at least one internal 90 degree angle. Four congruent sides means four sides of equal lengths. In this little diagram of a square, we can use these little lines to signify that the four sides have the same measurement, the same length, and at least one internal 90 degree angle. Well, that's interesting because most of us realize that a square actually has four internal 90 degree angles. So why does the definition only talk about at least one? This is because if you try to draw a square, a quadrilateral with four equal sides, and if you make sure to draw two of those sides at a 90 degree angle, the other three angles will be forced to become 90 degrees. So the definition doesn't have to mention that it has all four internal 90 degree angles. Mentioning one is enough, along with four congruent sides to make a square have all four internal 90 degree angles. So I can draw my square like this, where we see the four little squares in the corners that signify that those are 90 degree angles. And we see the little lines that show that the four sides are congruent. These are some of the basic facts about the square. In part one, we talked about the basic facts about a square, and we looked at the definition of a square. But now in part two, we're asking the question, is a square also a rectangle? And is a rectangle also a square? Well, the answer is going to be yes and no. Let's look at the definition of a square first. A square is a quadrilateral that has four congruent sides and at least one internal 90 degree angle. We can see in this diagram of a square that the four sides are congruent as shown with these little lines and that it in fact has four internal 90 degree angles as shown with these little squares on the corners. Now is a rectangle a square? A rectangle has the four internal 90 degree angles but it doesn't necessarily have four congruent sides. Instead, it has two pairs of congruent sides. Now let's look at the definition of a rectangle. A rectangle is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of opposite congruent sides and at least one internal 90 degree angle. Very similar to the square, but it doesn't have to have four congruent sides. The four sides have to be broken down into two pairs of sides that are opposite and that are the same length. Therefore, a rectangle is not necessarily a square because it doesn't necessarily have to have four congruent sides. A square, though, is a rectangle because a square has the at least one internal 90 degree angle. And yes, you can say it has two pairs of opposite congruent sides. Even though all four sides are congruent, we can still say that it has two pairs of opposite congruent sides. So the answer to today's question, is a square a rectangle, is yes. And is a rectangle a square? Usually, no. This time we're answering the question, is a square also a rhombus? And the question, is a rhombus also a square? Over here on the right, I have a diagram of a square that shows that it has four internal 90 degree angles, as shown by these little yellow squares in the corners. And it has four congruent sides, as shown by these little lines. And over here on the left, I have a yellow rhombus, which also shows that it has four congruent sides, but it does not have 90 degree angles in the corners or at least it does not necessarily have them. Let's look at the definition of a square. 
A square is a quadrilateral that has four congruent sides and at least one internal 90 degree angle. So we can see that this orange square is following those rules. But the yellow rhombus, it has the four congruent sides, but this one doesn't have even one internal 90 degree angle. And we can judge this by eye, but we can also measure with a protractor. So what's the definition of a rhombus? A rhombus is a quadrilateral that has four congruent sides. Well, our yellow rhombus is following that rule, and so is our orange square. So now we know the answer to these questions. A square is actually also a rhombus, but a rhombus is not necessarily also a square. It will only be a square if it happens to have the internal 90 degree angles. Is a square also a parallelogram? And is a parallelogram also a square? Let's look at the definition of a square. A square is a quadrilateral that has four congruent sides and at least one internal 90 degree angle. So this light blue square on the right follows those rules. These little lines show that the four sides are equal. And these little squares in the corners show that the internal angles are 90 degrees. The square has four congruent sides and at least one internal 90 degree angle. But the parallelogram, the purple shape on the left, has two pairs of opposite congruent sides, but it does not have four congruent sides, or it does not necessarily have four congruent sides. And this one does not have any internal 90 degree angles. So a parallelogram does not necessarily have either four congruent sides or any internal 90 degree angles. So a parallelogram is not necessarily a square. And a square is necessarily a parallelogram. Here's the definition of a parallelogram. A quadrilateral that has two pairs of opposite congruent sides. But a square, although it has four congruent sides, can be said to have two pairs of opposite congruent sides. So therefore, a square is a parallelogram. Is a square also a trapezoid? And is a trapezoid also a square? On the right, I have a green square, and we can see that the four sides are congruent, as signified by these little lines, and the four internal angles are all 90 degrees. On the left, I have two orange trapezoids. This one on the left is an isosceles trapezoid, and the one in the middle is a right trapezoid. The right trapezoid has two 90 degree angles, and it is not indicated that any of the sides are congruent, equal in size to each other. The isosceles trapezoid has two sides that are opposite and are equal in size. We can see that side AB is parallel to side CD in both trapezoids because we are given information that is indicating that. And we can also see that side BC is not parallel to side AD in both cases. Let's look at the definition of a trapezoid. A trapezoid is quadrilateral with a pair of opposite sides that are parallel and in which the remaining pair of opposite sides are not parallel. Warning, this is the exclusive definition of a trapezoid. There is also an inclusive definition. The conclusions of this video depend on the fact that we are using the exclusive definition. This shows that both of these trapezoids ABCD are trapezoids. But is the square a trapezoid? Well, the answer is no. The square is not following the rules for a trapezoid. It definitely has a pair of opposite sides that are parallel. In fact, it has two pairs, and that's the problem because one of the pairs of opposite sides needs to not be parallel if it were to be a trapezoid. So the square is not a trapezoid. Is a trapezoid a square? Well, let's look at the definition of a square. A square is a quadrilateral that has four congruent sides and at least one internal 90 degree angle. The trapezoid on the right has two internal 90 degree angles, but it will not have four congruent sides. It's impossible for that to happen 
Because of the fact that sides BC and AD are not parallel, that is forcing them to not be congruent. In the isosceles trapezoid over here on the left, we also can see that this trapezoid is not a square. It has two congruent sides, but the other two sides cannot be congruent. Therefore, the answer in both cases is no. A square is not also a trapezoid, and a trapezoid is not also a square. That is today's Daily Dose of Math. Please like, subscribe, and share.